Uh, this ECG is one of many that um, are given to students in medicine at Royal Darwin Hospital and they go through these um, during their medicine rotation. This is number two of about 50 and thus it's the beginning of the course and learning of interpretation. There will be more of these in uh, subsequent um, videos. I encourage you to look at it first before I talk about it and see if you can identify the answer. The first thing we do whenever we look at an ECG is to determine the heart rate. And the easiest and the best way to do this is to count the number of QRS complexes along the bottom of the ECG strip. And because that represents 10 seconds, we multiply it by 60 to get the heart rate. So in this instance, uh, we'll count them. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now always count the ones that seem to be out of place. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So the heart rate in this instance is 16 times 6, which equals 96. You can check that if you like on your calculator. The next thing to do is to determine the rhythm, and that's what this ECG is about. To all of us, it, there's obviously a, a beat that's strange, and that's this one here, which we've already highlighted. It is uh, out, of, out of place. Uh, because it, be, it's early, it's called an ectopic. So that, that beat there is an ectopic. And like everything in medicine, if something's out of place, it's called an ectopic. And there are two forms of ectopics. There are atrial and there are ventricular ectopics. The atria, as the name uh, indicates, arise or come from the atria. And obviously, the ventricular ectopics come from the ventricle. Now, how, how do we distinguish between the two? A, a lot of people think that an atrial ectopic will have an unusual P wave followed by a QRS, but this is not always the case and can be a, can, a trap. And sometimes you might even see a little P wave in front of a ventricular ectopic, so that's not a reliable method. And I think the best way to um, demonstrate this is to try and work out exactly what's happening. And so I've got this picture here which I've stolen from the web. We'll try and work out what happens in each of these cases in, in, in a ventricular and an atrial ectopic. So if we start with an atrial ectopic, it will arise somewhere here in the atria. It will depolarize the atria in the normal fashion and arrive at the AV node. And then there will be a rapid conduction down the His bundle system. Uh, here we have the left bundle and the le right bundle. This is all the His bundle system. And this is what gives rise to the narrow QRS complexes that we normally see. In the in the normal situation, the SA node delivers a depolarizing potential to the atria, which gives rise to the P wave. Then uh, there is a short delay as the um, impulse goes through the AV node, which is this little segment here. And then there's this racing down through the um, His bundle system, which delivers the uh, electrical signal to the ventricle so that it can contract rapidly and we get a narrow QRS which is like this. Now if we have a ventricular ectopic it will start somewhere like here and it is excluded from the His bundle system and so it tends to dribble uh, through the ventricle like this. This is my how I imagine it. And so there is a wide QRS and a bizarre looking QRS because there's not the coordinated depolarization of the heart and so the hallmark of a ventricular ectopic that it is wide that is greater than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds 
should be a 0 0.12 there, and it is bizarre looking. Whereas an A-track topic will look very much, very similar to the normal QRS, but it will be in the wrong spot. Uh, I hope this has helped you understand ventricular ectopics, and I'll see you for the next video. Goodbye.